Hiya, Rachel. Thank you so much for coming and joining me on the Mary Jess Meets podcast. Thank you. How Hello. You? Thank you. I'm doing very well. Thank you. It's lovely to see you. <laughs> <laughs> it's so lovely to see you. And I, I, when I sent you the message saying, would you like to be on the podcast? I honestly didn't actually expect you to say yes, because <laughs> you've, just got, you've got so much on your plate at the moment, because you've literally just had a baby girl, gorgeous Julia, haven't you? Yes. Yes. She's already five five and a half weeks actually oh it's just God. crazy how the time is flying with this whole coronavirus thing <laughs> yeah. you know? I know we're stuck at home so some days longer than others but actually because of the kids because I have a two-year-old as well apart from my five-week-old it's just they keep me so busy that I just don't realize some days you know they just blend into one <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yes, yeah. but that's why that's another reason why I so gladly and readily accept it because it's just you know an hour or so or whatever half an hour of adult conversation about music <laughs> with like-minded people. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's it's even more difficult now than ever, isn't it? Because of all the lockdown and and everything. Are you still in yeah. Malta? Um, actually, the uh, we're on a positive note here at the moment. Um, yesterday, they announced that the restrictions are going to be relaxed slightly. Oh, so, wow. um, yeah, we're allowed to go out with masks, um, but in groups of no more than four, as from tomorrow. Wow. And um, we still can't take the kids out to the parks and swings and stuff like that, which is a nightmare. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, schools and everything still closed. But um, some shops, retail shops, for example, have been opened um, with obviously what is the new normal now so um like yeah, whatever that is yeah. Shop, yeah you can't even try the clothes on in the changing room you know so oh my yeah. gosh yeah but i mean my timing to come for you as well because you're just at the end of your pregnancy and then yeah. it hit us didn't it and then i just thought it was, it was mad. Going, what how is it this was insane work? i mean like beginning of march i mean obviously coronavirus had already hit the world quite hard but in Malta, it wasn't really known yet kind of thing. So I, I gave birth to Julia on the 26th of March. But oh, by the way, I'm referring to her because she is actually right here, right now. <laughs> <laughs> At the chest. Yes. <laughs> um, I love that. I love that you're <laughs> on a podcast called Yes, Good. Mom Life. <laughs> Fully endorsed um, <laughs> Um, yeah so basically like beginning of March I was just literally thinking about the pregnancy you know and then all of a sudden in a couple of weeks the world just turned upside down more than just turned upside down for me yeah. and uh, just going into hospital with all these new restrictions and rules coming into place you know it was a little bit mind-boggling and quite um, scary you know as well I was quite I can't anxious imagine terrifying doesn't even quite cut it surely yeah, it was it was quite scary because you just don't know what to expect if you're going to go in to the hospital to give birth and suddenly be tested and be found positive, for example, you know. So if I was found positive, they would have had to take the baby away from me for about two weeks. So I was really Gosh. nervous, but thankfully I was negative. <laughs> but then like um, on the day we went into hospital, actually, there were new rules coming into place. So my husband um, couldn't even spend the night there with me. He... Um, was allowed thankfully in the delivery suite so he saw obviously his daughter being born and that was great and he was there for moral support and all but yeah. as soon as um, she was born and we had to move back into the the other room basically the the, the normal hospital room after the delivery yeah. um, he would have normally been allowed to stay but he couldn't he was asked to leave just because of you know having less people in the hospital less risk basically oh my so gosh. at least the midwives were really great and they knew that what we're going through is quite difficult and uh, yeah. different so they they were actually really really nice you know they were trying so hard to have a good sense of humor and keeping everyone positive you know so, so actually everything went really well yeah but well, thankfully yeah. everything went really well you know the the birth was great the recovery was great they left they let me back go back home after i'd say 36 hours which is really really good wow that is good and i guess it also meant that your husband didn't have to be away from you for exactly so that was really great as well um and even for for my other daughter for hannah um she got to come home then and bond straight away with the baby and now they've they've just bonded out with, <laughs> with <laughs> the four of us sick of each other's faces <laughs> 
but yeah no it's going really well thank you Oh my gosh, I'm so happy to hear that because I can't imagine the anxiety going into give birth when you don't know what the situation is going to be like. You don't yeah. know what's going to happen. You don't know if your husband actually is going to be allowed to yeah. be there and with the rules yeah. changing the day that you go in. Yeah, it literally on the day that we went in, which was the day before we gave birth, all the rules were being changed. So at a point we actually had a doctor come to tell us, you can actually go home and wait till you're in labor to come back. As we're leaving, literally, as we're walking out of the hospital, my gynecologist calls me and tells me the rules have changed again. You can actually walk back to the room that you just came from and you can stay there. I'm like, oh my goodness, what is going on? But obviously, you can't shoot the messenger in this case because things were changing for them. They're going through so much work as well, you know, and it was just, it was a bit mental. But at the same time, you just really appreciate that everyone was really trying to work so hard for you. And um, actually, Malta has been voted, I believe, like number one by the World Health Organization from the EU about how we're tackling the situation. So wow. I, I could really tell that um, the hospital was really taking really good precautions. Like I actually felt really safe in a hospital, you know, so. <laughs> Gosh, that's amazing. Yeah, and and yeah. lucky. It must be nice to feel safe and looked after, especially when you've got, well, not only about to give birth, yeah. but then have all of that craziness going on around you. Like, exactly it was and like the immunization <laughs> factor as well yeah exactly you know and like little julia obviously had no injections or anything no immunization so it's just scary going out of the house with her at all you know yeah absolutely yeah. but um, have you been going out at all or are you just like mainly just staying? recently um obviously the first few weeks we were on lockdown um well it was a kind of it was a slightly relaxed lockdown i would think in malta just because the numbers were lower than in other places right um but still when you give birth obviously you're kind of on a lockdown anyway <laughs> for the first few weeks i would say so it kind of worked in our favor selfish as that sounds um, <laughs> <laughs> um yeah but past i'd say two weeks we've tried to just because of two-year-old really to keep her stuck at home she's full of energy you know you need to get her out a little bit for some fresh air you know just either take her somewhere on a sandy beach you know or for a nature walk once yeah. a week it was in the beginning and now we're trying to take it up to twice a week you know but it's just it's tough because she's missing the grandparents and the relatives how do you explain that you know to a two-year-old it's, it's hard so she can't understand why she can't see them why she can't hug them and all that stuff because recently this week we actually saw them again after a really long time but she couldn't yeah. understand like why we can't hug them you know? So like even the relatives and grandparents haven't even managed to, to hold Julia yet. They haven't, um, they hadn't probably met Julia until a few days ago. Oh my gosh. But now since the restrictions have been yeah, relaxed a bit, they, they got to finally see her, but from a distance, <laughs> you know, it's just, it's so surreal, you know, it just feels like some weird movie. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, no, I know exactly what you're saying, because I felt like that when all of this was kicking off and we were listening to it on the radio. It felt like we were listening to an audio book. Exactly, exactly. It doesn't, it doesn't feel real. That's it. That's it. Um, yeah. And then I heard that uh, a distant cousin of mine who lives down the road was actually tested positive and was recovering in ITU in, in hospital. And that's when it hit me. And I was like, <gasps> OK, this is real. <laughs> you know, like it's it's hitting home now. But he's, he's fully recovered, thankfully. Oh my gosh, yeah. that's so lucky. I'm so, I'm so happy to hear that. That's really... Yeah. Crazy, isn't it? We've, had a lot of, we've had a lot of recoveries, thankfully, here in Malta, just because they're tackling the situation so well. I, I, yeah. I'm really impressed with the way they've, they've tackled it, actually. Wow. Um, yeah, so it's really funny, but like I was telling my husband the other day, because everyone is on lockdown, not just us, after having a newborn, everyone's like sending me things to do online so I'm actually finding myself really busy this time around as opposed to when I had my other kid you know at first with Hannah it was like everyone's out there performing I really miss performing I want to do stuff I want to get on a stage and now it's like okay everyone's at home like me it's fine we all have a computer screen we can do this <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah oh my gosh uh, but I know exactly what you mean about being extra busy it's just because I guess I thought Oh, I've lost all my work. I better make myself busy. And now I've managed of to make Of course, because you must have had a lot of things lined up for the next few months, I guess, that have been postponed or Yeah, exactly. Or cancelled, you know, one of one or the other. Yeah, and yeah. so then uh, I just I always make myself a little bit too busy than I'm supposed to be. 
um, I think that's a creative's, um, you know, curse or blessing in, in a sense, because we are always trying to be productive, aren't we? We're always trying to create our own work. So this for us is kind of normal in a way that we have to create our own work all the time, I guess, just in a different way. <laughs> I know what you're saying, but like you're creating your own work and now juggling two kids. How do you manage to, how do you have any, how do you balance that? It's like so many plates and balls in the air. I just. Well, usually I'd have my mum to help and that, that's what was scaring me this time around because obviously she's not around. But thankfully, my husband's work have allowed him to work from home. Oh, amazing during this time so um that's been a real help i mean he's obviously trying to work on the computer so throughout, throughout the day it's just me trying to handle two kids but um sometimes he has to stop and help me out with them and then he continues working a little bit after hours or something you know but if they hadn't allowed that i don't know how i would have managed but on the sidelines i'm still um because i'm senior mentor for uh, a musical theater company here in malta called studio 18 and obviously they've had to reshuffle and do a lot of the stuff that was planned for the next few terms online as well. So I wasn't actually going to be involved earlier on because of obviously being on maternity. But um, now that everything's been shifted online, I'm going to help out in things like that as well, you know. So yeah, I'm finding myself quite busy actually. <laughs> Doing That's online crazy. recordings and giving online notes, you know. I wasn't yeah. planning on starting giving lessons and singing lessons again and taking part in shows and stuff. I wasn't planning on doing that to the end of the year, really, you know. But um, maybe this time around, because everything's shifted online, it might actually be easier to start earlier, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And I so admire you, honestly, with um, your dream of having a family and yet being a singer at the same time. Because I remember when I came to see you in Malta, we were chatting about kids and how... When was that? Was that... Was that... Was I pregnant already? Or... Uh, I yes. So. I was. I think so. Yes. I believe so. Maybe the second time. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Julia! <laughs> Hello, gorgeous it little girl. Oh. <laughs> back of your head, making it baby. Well, it's a lovely, gorgeous <laughs> little back of the head. I gotta say, <laughs> it's beautiful. Yeah, because when I came to see you in Malta, we were chatting about kids and um, just how difficult it is as a singer to go through that because you just worry yeah. how it's gonna. Like for me, I worry how it's gonna change my voice. Um, and then not yeah. being able to sing for however long and, and, and that kind of thing. Um, I'll be honest, really with the first child, I, I worried more about it. But having been through it now with the second child, I said it will, be, it will all be fine because it came back, you know, um, just two months. No, in February. Yeah, exactly. Well, a, couple, a bit more than two months ago. Um, I was in a Valentine's weekend show performing. So I was heavily pregnant. But. You know, sometimes actually the pregnancy can actually make you sound stronger, healthier. I felt like I had slightly more mature sound than I normally do, which is really wow. good. And I felt like this time around, actually even even with Hannah, I felt like my um, high notes had gone a little bit. Um, so I had lost a few of my high notes, but I had gained a lot of lower notes and I was really enjoying those. But then after I had had Hannah, funnily enough, the high notes came back. Ah. but the low notes remained so oh, nice. i was actually really grateful yeah i was like okay that's that's actually really nice i mean it obviously affects everyone really really differently especially because of like the hormones and everything um but this time around i'm just i'm actually waiting to see what happens now because everything's still kind of falling back into place yeah so yeah, that'd be really interesting to see and to feel it within yourself but what about your yeah. muscles as well because obviously they've had to i think for me that is that yeah rather than range and stuff and the, the sound for me it's more the strength that is where i feel i really struggle um especially this time around obviously it's still early days though but um i always felt that i could never really get that same strength that i had had just before i had had hannah but then again that was two and a half years ago um and now with this one, obviously I have to see these things take time. Yeah. So maybe next year I'll let you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the stomach muscles, yeah, and everything. I hope they get back to normal. Like for me, I found um, prenatal and postnatal Pilates really, really helpful. Oh, brilliant. For that. Yeah. 
because I think a lot of people don't realize how much singers use their tummy muscles to support their voice when they're singing they're so integral to the voice yeah and for me that is what that is what I like I feel I really feel the lack of um support right now that's that's a definite for me but obviously everything's like like jelly right now so (laughs) and it's not just that I guess weeks (laughs) yeah yeah But it's also like um, the tiredness, obviously, the first few weeks, you're just, you're on overdrive, you're exhausted, you're not getting much sleep. <laughs> um, so that affects everything as well, doesn't it? So Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, actually, she's, she's a better sleeper so far than the other one, so hopefully that will remain that way. Oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. <laughs> wow, she looks so small still. She's still so little. She is, she is. Yeah. <laughs> Well, now that you've had Julia um, and things will hopefully start getting back to normal soon, what are your sort of thoughts for the for the future? Because I know you're a teacher, um, but you also do a lot of musical theatre and musical theatre roles, mm-hmm. um, not only in Malta, but also in the UK. Um, I'd love to hear more about that side of your career. For me, as soon as the airport's open once again, I would be dying to fly back up to the UK and do more <laughs> shows there. Because for me, that's something like, I can't believe that it's going to take so long for me to travel again, and especially to visit the UK again. And yeah, that's quite sad. But as soon as they open again, I swear. <laughs> no. um, yeah, in Malta, um, I actually had a few musicals lined up um, one of them was held in March, um, but I couldn't take part then because I had just found out I was pregnant. So yeah, like there were a lot of shows that I was about to take part in, which then I couldn't take part in. And now a lot of those shows I could probably have taken part in because they've all been postponed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that is life. Um, so yeah, because I think everything is on hold and postponed, I don't know really what there is with regards to musical theater um going to happen like on actual stages i don't really know what's going to happen there but as soon as they are going to audition people to be back on live stage i'm there um i'm gonna be there man (laughs) (laughs) would you say that's that's probably your main passion now for your music career is being in musicals because obviously you recorded you're a recording artist you're in all angels would you say that that's really where you found Yes, I, for me, it's always been about musical theatre, I'll be honest. Like, I love singing out of the three disciplines. I love the three disciplines all, but um, for me, it's, it's singing. That is my real passion. So whether I'm singing in a musical, whether I'm singing in a concert, I absolutely love it. But I really do get that extra kick of taking on a character, taking on a role in a musical. I love that, you know. Um, so the past few years, you know, doing stuff like Marie and Sound of Music, you know, that, that was one of the perks for me. I, I just love um, musicals you are being very disgusting <laughs> um, <laughs> just looking at me with these two big eyes like, <laughs> uh, yeah I'd say oh I forgot what I was going to say yeah no um, with Studio 18 as well um, I, I'm basically doing a lot of vocal coaching online giving notes and stuff like that um, because we have a concert coming up for our students on the 15th May, which will be online if anyone would like to watch it. Some really good and up and coming talent there. Oh, good. You'll have to send me the link and I'll put it in the description. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I will. I will. It's, it's going to be a really good show. I'm really, really proud of them, actually. I'm really missing them. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just, it's just such a weird time because mm. a lot of the, like weddings, that, that was really the thing. Being on maternity leave, I said, Probably the only thing I can keep up with is doing a wedding mass here and there, you know, a wedding ceremony here and there. So unfortunately, those have all had to be postponed as well for wedding couples. You know, they've all postponed their June weddings, May weddings. I was actually meant to be at a wedding today and yesterday. Oh my singing. Gosh. Yeah, they've all postponed them by a year or so. So, yeah. Wow. Well, that's I do love weddings as well. I've sung at a couple of weddings um, and it just... They're one of the best gigs. Everybody's so happy. <laughs> yes, really- I absolutely love it as well. I really love it as well. And um, I've got a really nice team as well. Uh, my accompanist, she's a great friend of mine, brilliant pianist. So I'm really missing her, actually. You know, it's, it's just so strange. And whenever it's not on a piano um, and they want me to be accompanied by a guitarist, it's usually my husband. 
Oh, so I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm really missing gigging with him, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's really, yeah, I can completely see why. What well, do you think as well as doing musical theatre stuff when the world's getting a bit more back to normal, do you think you'll go back in the studio and uh, record some more songs like maybe you're under, under your own name or your musical theatre things that you love? Like, do you think that's something that you'd like to do? Um, never say never. I, I love recording, but I really have found that as much as I love recording, I so much prefer live. It's, it's more me. It's, it's just, I don't know why, maybe it's just what I'm used to more, what I've been more used to throughout my entire life, I guess. But having said that, I do enjoy recording. Yeah. Um, and it's nice to be able to do things on your own terms too. So possibly the older I get, maybe yes, maybe there might be more recordings in the future. Yeah. Because I guess the main recording that you've done has been with All Angels, isn't it? Is that the main body yeah. of work that you've worked on? Um, I have my solo album, which is called Forever Yours, which I released in 2015. Oh, brilliant. Um, yeah, so that was pre-children, so I had more time to myself. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the launch concerts were really fun, and uh, I, I actually really enjoyed doing that album. But I would love to do something like that again one day um, as a solo artist. I enjoy doing solo stuff but mm. I have to be honest I really enjoy doing the All Angels stuff though uh, but again as much as I loved recording with All Angels I much preferred I, the live stuff you know I just love the the tours and the live concerts with them yeah for me that's what it's about <laughs> and it's so much more fun too isn't it because you know, constant friends around laughing being silly yeah, that yeah. must be amazing. That's, that's something that I look at rather jealously of people who are in groups as a solo artist. You know, that's something that I really look at and go, oh, that would be lovely. But yeah. <laughs> it's hard as well, though. It's hard as well because you have to be so accepting of what each other wants, you know, as well. And as much as we all love each other and are still very good friends, you know, we had to come to terms with the fact that we can't continue as a group touring all the time. You know, we all have different wants and... We managed to do a reunion concert, at least, um, back in December which 2018. Which was amazing. <laughs> it was really fun, which you were, um, yeah, that was really, really great. And, uh, oh, hello, sorry. <laughs> Dropping stuff on the floor. No worries. <laughs> I must say, your juggling is very, very good. I'm very impressed. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the most well, I've got to juggle. I would have been too impressed. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, like I told you a little bit earlier on before we started the, the recording, I, was, I would have loved to continue my water, but my, my cat came and drank it for me. So yeah. um, that, that is the craziness of this household, you know, the juggling, like, okay, I guess the water I actually have pre-prepared. You know? Yeah, it's real life right there, that is. That it's is real life. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, quite it's simple, but, you know, it's quite... Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's funny. No, I really loved the All Angels reunion concert. I thought it was absolutely amazing. And I loved how you did your own stuff throughout the concert as well to show how you've developed individually. Yes, that's exactly. Really nice. Exactly. Yeah. But how did you actually become part of All Angels? I'm not actually quite clear on that story. Okay. Oh, that's a really funny story, actually. Um, just let me settle this one down. There you go. Okay. <laughs> Basically, um, really, a really long time. Um, when I was about 18 I had heard about All Angels and I was coming to the UK um, very regularly to do auditions for musical theatre colleges and one time I actually walked into HMV and saw this classical crossover girl group called All Angels. Um, there, there was an album there and I just you know picked up the headphones had to listen to it and I was like oh I like this I'm gonna buy it. Really random had never heard of them in my life and um, I took this album back home with me and slowly had become one of my favorite albums. And uh, I just, I remember so clearly telling my mom when I was about 18, 19 years old, telling her, mom, I can really see myself doing something like this. I would really love to do something like this. No way. Who would have ever thought exactly that um, I would end up going to the UK when I was 20 to be in a musical theatre college at, in Guildford, Guildford School of Acting. Mm. And when I graduated, so when I was 21, um, I started working, blah, 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 doing a few uh, musicals here and there. And then I think I was, I can't remember actually how old I was, 22, no, I think I was a bit older, maybe 23 or 24. 
Um, I'm 34 now. But yeah, I was about 23 or 24 years old. And I remember going to the shops and getting the stage newspaper and just browsing through as you do every Thursday and seeing what jobs, you know, are coming out. And I just remember seeing this All Angels advert. Um, and I had a friend of mine next to me who was sitting in the park in Chiswick. And uh, this friend of mine actually is a really good um, tenor who's um, actually quite well known here in Malta. And he was currently, um, he was at the time studying at um, the Royal College of Music mm. with Laura Wright, who was part of All Angels. Yeah, oh wow. And she was, yeah, she was leaving. And as I saw this advert in the newspaper, I mentioned it to him. I said, doesn't she come to college with you or something? And he's like, yes, oh yeah, I, I heard something through the grapevine that I think she's leaving. Oh, is that um, the advertisement for, you know, the new angel? I'm like, yeah, it seems so. He's like, oh my God, you should go for it. I'm like, I am. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so I don't remember going to these uh, auditions, you know, following this advert. And I just couldn't believe it, you know, like I had this album back home and I'm thinking, I'm about to meet these people you know but who would have ever thought you know and there were so many other girls I remember there who were good and I just really didn't think I was going to get it but I really did try and uh, there were quite a few rounds I remember quite a few rounds and uh, they whittled it down to the last few and I remember one of the things we had to do apart from sight reading and singing and stuff was um uh what the, yeah we had to like pretend that we were on stage presenting ourselves and presenting a song or something like that so just to see like if I had a sense of humor or something and um, I said something on the lines of like yes I'm from Malta anyone know where that is <laughs> or something like that <laughs> it's very small <laughs> but um, it was something stupid like that but little did I know that actually all angels were listening in another room I didn't know they were actually listening in um, to that no particular way. yeah and I think it was Charlotte or someone yeah it was Charlotte I think who said oh I like <laughs> yeah, she's a comedian in the group, you know. She's really done <laughs> done well for herself with uh, comedy, and she's doing so well on um, TV dramas, isn't she? You know, absolutely. Yeah, with her yeah. acting career, it's amazing. <laughs> oh, singers oh, lungs are coming out now. <laughs> I've offended you. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, yeah, but then, long story short, um, I just remember going to Covent Garden one day, going to get a coffee, and receiving this uh, message saying, um, please come for one final round with the girls, you know, um, final <gasps> audition. And it was at Charlotte's house. And really? apparently, it was already decided that I was part of the group, but they just wanted to have like a tea time party with me get to know me a little bit but I'm there thinking like is this an audition what's going on and at the end of it all they're like no no you're, you're in you're in I'm like wow. wow that's so amazing oh my gosh it was just so weird because like from a fan I just remember being like I'm such a fan of you guys and then you know just suddenly becoming really great friends you know and it was a really great transition that must have been amazing. I love that story. I love how you put it out there to the universe and just went, this is what I'd love to do. And the universe yeah. went, oh. like, okay, yeah. We'll sort it out for you. <laughs> yes. And it was, it was quite a difficult time, I remember, because, um, you know, I was getting a few uh, musicals here and there and I had got some interest from some agents and then I had an agent and then I decided to call it quits with that agent and I was in between jobs and in between agents was just getting a little difficult being away from home and stuff and then this came along you know and it was, it was really great. <laughs> That's absolutely amazing I'm so glad you're able to tell me that story <laughs> That's fantastic. I just love that I love how it's like you put it out there and made it happen like <laughs> That's absolutely incredible. But yeah, I, just, I think that's, it's amazing when opportunities come up and it's amazing the ones that you make for yourself as well. Yeah. You've got to take yeah. those opportunities and make the most of them. That's just so totally. important. And I mean, I've had a couple of really good agents and stuff and that have got good stuff for me, but I always felt, I mean, right now I don't have an agent anymore. I don't do anything with agents anymore for now. It doesn't sound like you need um, to. I think you've got enough work. <laughs> I feel, yeah, I just feel like it's, it's, always been the work that I've managed to kind of create for myself that I I don't know it just kind of worked that way for me I guess it's not the way it works for everyone and I can understand that but I always felt that um, the work that I ended up seeking out was the work I actually got 
Yeah, no, that's absolutely brilliant. Yeah. And also it, get, it shows how brilliant you are that people want to continue working with you again and again and again. Because that's, <laughs> that's how you keep getting these roles, isn't it? People go, well, she was amazing. We've got to have her back. <laughs> I guess so. But um, now it's also at a point, I'm at a point, I feel, you know, being a mum of two, 34, the stomach muscles not working like they used to. <laughs> um, and you just see like all these amazing students that you used to teach when they were young and they're all like suddenly brilliant and thinking amazing and getting into the top schools in the UK for musical theatre. And I'm just like, okay, I guess I'm being kicked to the side and you're all going to take over. No, <laughs> that, I don't think There's that's... that mind frame too. <laughs> I guess it, it kind of depends on what you want and what your priorities are. But if you take yes, something like yeah. um, Kerry Ellis, it's like, yeah. I'm sure she's old, not that much older than you, though, is she? She's, um, she turned 40, I believe, last year. I guess she's 40, yeah. 41. Yeah. Um, I just, I remember that because um, they had mentioned it last year during the show I had come up to do in May. It was exactly a year ago in May, yeah. Um, and she's such a, an idol of mine because she somehow makes it all work. She's so busy and she's a mum of two as well, you know, and yeah. um, I remember backstage um, in the show that we had done last year was called The Best of Rock Musicals. It was great. It was at um, the event in Apollo. And uh, I just remember, you know, chatting with her backstage. And just the main thing that um, I wanted to ask her was, like, how do you do this with two kids? <laughs> I'm struggling with one at the time, you know. So um, she's like, "Don't worry, hon. You'll get used to it, and it does get easier as they get older." So she's such. Like, she, she's so down to earth. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and she's still working her behind off like, all the time. Yes. And, yeah, yes. and her voice is so incredible. It's just on it every single time. I just yeah. Her voice is just—it's a powerhouse. She is a oh, powerhouse. Yeah. I mean. That's something I'm really envious of, I swear. Like, I mean, for me, it's always been about this angelic stuff, the angelic side, you know. But when you hear her belty voice, I was just like, wow. <laughs> okay, <laughs> well, it's amazing, yeah. That belt is really good. Incredible. Oh, Julia. <laughs> she says, I want to talk on the podcast too. <laughs> I've got singer's lungs. <laughs> <laughs> she really does. She really, really does. The second she popped out, she was like, Rah! <laughs> <laughs> exercising those lungs yeah, yeah. no I've, I've i've been worried in my career as well about um getting older but i was talking to georgie about um georgie from ida about okay. getting older um because i've just turned 30 and she was just turning 30 and i said it is scary because you see younger people come along and you're thinking well maybe it's maybe the industry wants them more but then yeah. i said to her well our voices as classical singers they're only just maturing now like we've exactly. still got that's so true. many great vocal years ahead of us and that's, that's exciting it. that's it that's it yeah. that's so true i had this conversation actually a few months ago with a good friend of mine who's a singer and uh, she's a year younger than me and uh, she was actually asking me like you know do you feel it's the right time for you to have kids now or should you have them later i'm like well to each his own i guess but i know we are in the prime of our lives for certain roles now but we can also still be, you know, doing it when we're much older as well, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I'm so sorry for the... <laughs> I've kind of drowned, poor thing, I've drowned the sound out. Don't worry. Well, it sounds like she'd like to have your full attention now, so we can... <laughs> I think so. I think we might have to call it a day. I thought that she was going to settle, but she actually gave us quite a good... She Quite did it. Thank of you time. very much, Julia. You were very generous sharing your mummy with us <laughs> for such a long time. <laughs> well, thank you so much okay, for coming on now. the podcast. I'm I'm really grateful. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. There's some time and with us. Well done on doing this. You know, we need stuff like this at these at this time. Oh, the other one's coming. See, perfect timing. Hello. <laughs> you want to say hello? Oh, hello. hello. <laughs> I'll say hello from here. Yeah. Hello, Daddy. She's <laughs> coming to say hello. You had met Mary Jess. <laughs> yes, okay, we're getting camera we, shy. We had a milkshake and a peanut butter ball. Exactly. Ball exactly. You had, yeah. had a peanut butter ball from her, from Mary Jess. Do you remember? I'll say hello. Hello. Hello, 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 hello. Hello, hello gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> hello. Hello. Hello, darling. Hello. Look at your gorgeous curly hair, I love it. 
okay i think we've got to go yeah no okay. worries i'll leave you to it but thank you so um, much for your time and for coming on thank you i'll chat thank to you, you so again much <laughs> see you okay, bye, bye.